Open your books up to page number 23. Page 23. Your grammar books. How are you guys doing today? Good. Happy Monday. Mondays are good days. It's the beginning of the week. So it's a good day. How many of you had a good weekend? Raise your hand. Awesome. Anyone do anything super exciting over the weekend? Tony? That's yeah, not super exciting. But it is to you. So that's okay. Shane? That's exciting. Did you eat the whole thing? The whole thing? By yourself? You didn't share it? Did you share it? That's good. That sounds delicious. I could go for one of those right now. Yes, sir. Both my dad's birthday. You what? Both my dad's birthday. It was your dad's birthday? I know. He has the same birthday as my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law was born the same day as your dad. Very cool. Happy birthday to your dad. Yes, sir. Um, my mom was going to eat a whole pie by yourself. I'm going to come to your house. I didn't get any sweet, anything good like that. We ate out a lot last week because we were having some work done in our house. So my kitchen was torn up so I could not cook. So we did a lot of eating out. Maybe I should have just come over to some of your houses and had dinner and cookie and pie with some of you. All right, guys, let's jump into language today, okay? Uh, we were talking on Friday about some mistakes when we're joining sentences. I don't know how you two boys ended up next to each other, but I'm going to have to tell Mrs. Coral that ain't going to work. You have to prove to me that's going to work, okay? So make sure we're focusing in right here. Yes. It's interesting. How did that happen? Okay. Well, it'll dry. I'm sorry, bud. All right, put your, make sure your mask are on, by the way. Sixth grade and class masks have to be on, okay? And Gavin, hat off, please. Gavin, thank you. All right, so we started talking about when we join two sentences, okay? When we have two sentences that are joined correctly, what kind of a sentence is that? Who can raise your hand and tell me? When you have two simple sentences and they're joined correctly, what is that called, Ariel? Compound sentence, okay? Um, when we have two sentences that are put together incorrectly, what do we call that, Adam? A run-on, run okay? So Friday we talked about some ways that we can join sentences correctly. How can we correct them? Eyes up here, okay? Today we're going to add to that. Page 23. In the blue box, everyone reading with me, let's read it out loud together. Ready, begin. Another way to correct a run-together sentence is especially useful if the sentence contains related ideas. All right, thank you for the one person who read it out loud with me. Let's read it again. Everybody out loud, okay? Let's read that again. Ready, begin. Another way to correct a run-together sentence is especially useful if the sentence contains related ideas. So let's look at the examples and see what do they mean by this, okay? Step one, it says add words such as these to the beginning of the sentence. After, although, because, everyone should be following along in their books. If, since, unless, when, and while. You have already learned how helpful these words are in showing the relationships between ideas. So step two, we put a comma in place of and so, or and then. So. Now, what does that mean? Let's look at the next part. It says, instead of changing the previous example into three short, choppy sentences, because remember we talked about that, we could put a period and a capital letter and we could just make them their own sentences. But sometimes when you're writing a long story, if you just have all these little short, choppy sentences, it's not going to be interesting to read. So what is another way? It says, we can combine the two methods and change it into two more interesting sentences. So let's look at this example. This one, this first one, is incorrect, and you'll see why. It says, my little brother had never eaten a hard-boiled egg before, and so he mistakenly put the whole thing into his mouth, and then suddenly he could not chew or speak. Okay? We have three sentences here. Class, read the first sentence with me out loud. Ready, begin. My little brother had never eaten a hard-boiled egg before. Okay, let's read the second sentence. He mistakenly put the whole thing into his mouth. And the third sentence, 
Suddenly he could not chew or speak. Okay, now, if I changed all of those and so's or and then's to periods and capital letters, it'd be a little choppy. It'd be like this. My little brother had never eaten a hard-boiled egg before. He mistakenly put the whole thing into his mouth. Suddenly he could not chew or speak. So how do we compromise? How do we make this correct without having choppy little sentences that are kind of not interesting to read? Okay, so let's look at the revised version down below. Let's read this one out loud together. Ready? Begin. Since my little brother had never eaten a hard-boiled egg before, he mistakenly put the whole thing into his mouth. Suddenly, he could not chew or speak. Does that sound better than having three choppy sentences? And so they did that by adding that word since at the beginning. When we add that word since, Josiah, it's making that first sentence a fragment. Okay? Because remember, a sentence is a, sen is a group of words that expresses a complete thought, meaning it makes sense all by itself. But if I add that word since, since my little brother had never eaten a hard-boiled egg before, could I put a period at the end of that and call that a complete sentence? No. So that since that I've added on to the beginning of that group of words is making that group of words a fragment, which is why I can combine it with just a comma. Okay, make sure you understand that. It's very important. Eyes on Mrs. Roll. Make sure we understand why we can combine it with a comma when we add those words. Since, although, because, those words make that first group of words a fragment. Okay, so let's practice this. Right, B, I hope you were listening. It says, using method two, rewrite the run together sentences from right A. Page 22. Use because, when, or after as introductory words. So you need to be able to look over to the page you did on Friday. It says follow these steps. Number one, copy the sentence on notebook paper. Number two, use proofreader's marks to correct the sentence. And number three, write the revised version below. I'm going to let you skip um, steps one and two. Okay, but let's just look over at sentence one on, on right A on page 22. Charles A. Lindbergh was the first person to fly alone across the Atlantic, and so he received a hero's welcome back to America. How can I change the sentence using the strategy that we just read above? Um, Emmeline. Well, you, the, the uh, method that we looked at above it says that we're going to add a word at the beginning, right? It says, add words such as these to the beginning of the sentence. After, although, because, if, since, unless, when, or while. So this is the method that we're going to use to fix this sentence. So how can we add one of those words to the beginning of sentence one and make it a correct sentence? Josiah, can you give it a try? Since, so read the whole sentence then. What would it be? Very good, Josiah. So that is absolutely correct. That is what you would write on the line. You could either use the word since or you could even use the word because. Okay, so go ahead and write that. Hopefully you were listening to what Josiah just said. That was absolutely correct. And that's what you're going to write on line one. Since or because Charles A. Lindbergh was the first person to fly alone across the Atlantic, comma, he received a hero's welcome back to America. We are adding the word at the beginning. We're taking away that and so and putting a comma in his place. Gianni, if you um, have missed it, we're on page 23. We're rewriting the sentences from right A into right B using the method above in right in um, page 23. Okay, so we're adding words such as after, although, because, if, since, unless, when, and while to the beginning of our sentences. Taking out the words and then or and so and putting a comma in its place. Number one, 
because Charles A. Lindbergh was the first person to fly alone across the Atlantic, comma, he received a hero's welcome back to America. Let's look at sentence two on page 22, write A. The radio became popular in American homes. And then Amos and Andy was a favorite comic radio show. So once again, we want to fix this by adding one of those words at the beginning, taking those joining words and then out and putting a comma in its place. So what word would, would you choose here for the sentence? The radio became popular in American homes. And then Amos and Andy was a favorite comic radio show. Shane, what do you think? When? Good. When? When the radio became popular in American homes, Amos and Andy was a favorite comic radio show. Excellent job, Shane. We're going to add the word when at the beginning, take out the word and then, put a comma in its place. Give me a moment to finish writing that and we'll go on to number three. If you finish writing number two, go ahead and start reading over number three and see what you would put at the beginning of sentence three. When the radio became popular in American homes, comma, Amos and Andy was a favorite comic radio show. Finish two, you can go ahead and start on, on sentence three while we're waiting for others to finish. Okay, sentence three says, early automobiles replaced the horse, and so many stalled motorists wish to have their horses back. Josiah, what do you think? Very good. After early automobiles replaced the horse, Many stalled motorists wish to have their horses back. The first cars that were invented did not have all the mechanics down like the ones that we have today. So many of them were created, many of them would stall, break down. So they would think, well, my horse didn't break down or stall. Just had to feed him and kick him and he would go. So in the early days, after early automobiles replaced the horse, many stalled motorists wished to have their horses back. When you're finished with that, go ahead and turn over to page 24. Are you done rewriting all those, Landon? Okay, then go ahead and turn to page 24. Did you rewrite them on page 23?
You'll have to come back to that, Landon. Go ahead and page 24, okay? Page 24, guys. If you didn't finish rewriting that sentence, you can come back in a moment when we have some free work time. Go to page 24. It says at the top here, rewrite the following run together sentence on notebook paper, making 14 good sentences by leaving out any unnecessary ands, and so's, and thens. I don't want you to rewrite it on notebook paper. All I want you to do is go through this paragraph, and every time you see an incorrect um, compound sentence, when you see these run together sentences, I want you to use your proofreader's marks and just correct them, okay? It may be that you're deleting the and thens, putting a period and um, capitalizing the next word. It may be that you're adding a word at the beginning of the sentence to make a more interesting sentence. But I want you to go through here. You will be making 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's 14 different sentences that you will be correcting, okay? You may begin. I'm going to give you about five minutes to work on this. Then we're going to review for our quiz. Don't waste time. Are you done with your section? Let's finish doing that first, okay?
Okay, is everyone finished up? Let's check it, okay? Last night, I read a story called The Necklace. And in the story, Madame Lu uh, Luzel, a middle-class woman, longed to live like the rich. And then one day, her husband brought home an invitation for them to attend a fancy ball. And so she despaired, for she had no fine clothes. And then her husband gave her money to buy a suitable dress. And then, however, her joy was short-lived, for she then yearned for some fine jewels to wear. And so she borrowed a diamond necklace from, uh, from Madame Forrester, a friend who was quite well-to-do. And so Matilda was extremely happy and thoroughly enjoyed all the attention she received at the ball. And then, later, however, she found to her horror that she had lost the necklace. And so she and her husband borrowed 36,000 francs to buy one similar to it. And then for 10 long years, they worked day and night to pay the money back, never telling the owner that they had given her a different necklace. And so one day, the, after they had finally repaid their debts, Madame Loisel met Madame Forestier in the park. And so she decided to tell her the story. And then to her dismay, her friend replied, Oh, my poor Matilda, why my necklace was paste. It was worth at most 500 francs. <sighs> I can breathe. That was one huge run on sentence. Okay, there were no periods. There were no common conjunctions here. Okay, so the first uh, sentence there that you needed to fix was right after the necklace, we should have inserted a what? Period. And what should we have done to the word and? Anyone know? Shout it out if you know. No. What do we need to do to it? Delete it. We need to delete it. Okay, put a period, delete, and capitalize the word I. Madame Luzel, a middle class woman, longed to live like the rich. Insert a period. Delete, and then capitalize the word one. Make sure you're checking yours to make sure you got this correct. Um, her husband brought home an invitation for them to attend a fancy ball. Insert period. Delete and so, capitalize she. She despaired for she had no fine clothes. Insert period, delete and then, capitalize her. Um, her husband gave her money to buy a suitable dress. Delete and then. However, her joy was short-lived for she then learned, yearned for some fine jewels to wear. Insert period, delete and so, capitalize she. She borrowed a diamond necklace from Madame Forestier, a friend who was quite well-to-do. Okay, delete the comma, insert period, delete and so. Matilda is already capitalized. Go down to where it says the attention she received at the ball, insert period, delete and then. Capitalize the L and later. Um, later, however, she found to her whore that she had lost a necklace, insert period, delete and so. Capitalize she. She and her husband borrowed 36,000 francs to buy one similar to it. Insert period, delete, and then capitalize F and 4. For, the, uh, for 10 long years, they worked day and night to pay the money back, never telling the owner that they had given her a different necklace. Insert period, delete, and so capitalize 1. One day after they had finally repaid their debts, Madame Luzel met Madame Forestier in the park. Insert period, delete, and so capitalize she. She decided to tell her story, or tell her the story. Insert period, delete, and then capitalize two. How many of you got all of those? You found all 14. Only one of you? Okay. Well, wa watch carefully, okay? Remember, if we have two sentences joined with just a comma, or words like and so, or and then, those are going to be trigger words. We know if we see and so, and then, it's probably incorrectly joined, okay? So look carefully for those. All right, on the board here, I want you to look in your books in the back on page 293. If you want to mark it, you can. You're going to find your state of being verbs, your helping verbs, and your linking verbs, okay? Today, I want to go over these. I know most of you have already memorized these. You should have memorized them in third, fourth, fifth grade, okay? So let's go over though. I'm going to teach you a little tune. How many of you know the tune to the little Indians? That tune sound a little familiar? Okay, well, you're going to learn it, okay? So the song goes like this. Um, 
Am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been, have, has, had, do, does, did, shall, will, should, would, may, might, must, can, could. These are the helping verbs, okay? Now remember that these first few, these eight, these are your state of being verbs, okay? They can also be helping verbs, though, so these two lists can be lumped together. If this one is by itself, if there's no verb, action verb after it, eyes up here, if there's no action verb after this, this is considered a being verb, okay? It stands by itself. But if it comes before an action verb, then it's going to fall with this list, and it's going to be considered a helping verb, okay? For example, I am going. I am going. That would be a helping verb in that sentence because it's helping the action going, Cameron. But if I said I am 36 years old, am is not helping an action verb in that sentence. So in that sentence, it's still my verb, but it's the only verb, and I would label that a being verb, a state of being verb, okay? So I want you guys to sing this with me. I want to hear you, because if you get this little tune in your head, when you're about to take a quiz, here in a moment, that little tune's going to help you remember those verbs, okay? Here we go, sing it with me, ready? It goes, am, is, are, was, were, be, being, then, have, has, had, do, does, did, shall, will, should, would, may, might, must, can, could. These are the helping verbs. Good, let's do it again. Get it in your head. Here we go, ready? Am, is, are, was, were, be, being, then, have, has, had, do, does, did, shall, will, should, would, may, might, must, can, could. These are the helping verbs. Now, I memorized those when I was your age, and I have not had to refresh on them at all because I remembered that little tune, okay? And some of you boys, you don't want to sing it, but then you're going to take your quiz, and you're going to go, Mrs. Rule, well, I didn't know them. I'm trying to help you learn them. So sit up. Sing it with me. Let's learn them together. Here we go. Let's do it again. I want to hear everyone. I don't want anyone drinking water right now. I want everyone singing this with me. Ready? Begin. Am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been, have, has, had, do, does, did, shall, will, should, would, may, might, must, can, could. These are the helping verbs. Good. Now I'm going to uh, erase a couple. Let's see if we can remember some of them. Let's try it now. Here we go. Ready? Am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been, have, has, had, do, does, did, shall, will, should, would, may, might, must, can, could. These are the helping verbs. Good job. Here's a couple more. Okay, let's try it again. Here we go. Ready? Am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been, have, has, had, do, does, did, shall, will, should, would, may, might, must, can, could. These are the helping verbs. Good. All right. Nice. A few more. Okay. Let's try it again. Here we go. Ready? Am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been, have, has, had, do, does, did, shall, will, should, would, may, might, must, can, could. These are the helping verbs. How many of you say I got them down? I know them already. Okay, some of you? Let's try it. Here we go. Ready? Begin. Am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been, have, has, had, do, does, did, shall, will, should, would, may, might, must, can, could. These are the helping verbs. Good. A little bit louder. Ready? Am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been, have, has, had, do, does, did, shall, will, should, would, may, might, must, can, could. These are the helping verbs. Guess what? You're going to have to know those this year. You're going to have to know them next year. You're going to have to know them in 8th grade. You're going to have to know them in ninth grade. You're going to have to know them in 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade. And if you go to college, you're going to have to take an English class, and you're going to have to know them there. When I went to college, you take a test, and you that test that you take, it puts you either in a really, really easy English class, a regular class, or an advanced grammar class. So when I went to college, I took that test. I got placed into the advanced grammar class, and guess what I had to know? 
I had to know those helping verbs. I had to be able to write them on a quiz in college. And you know what? These tunes that I learned when I was your age, I would sit there and I would, and it helped me to write them, okay? I did the same thing with my presidents. did the same thing with my states and capitals. Sometimes if you make associations in your head, it helps you to memorize these things, okay? Now, these ones, I don't have a song for these ones. So these are the ones. So if you can remember the song for these ones, all you have to memorize are these, okay? These are your linking verbs, okay? These are never helping verbs. They're never state of being verbs. They are always only linking verbs. Now, remember that these verbs down here, these are your helping verbs. These are your state of being verbs. Okay, your state of being verbs, these ones that were on list list, am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been, those eight are also linking verbs, okay? So you'll notice that these two lists can be combined as, as helping verbs, and then these two lists, your state of being and your linking verbs can be linking verbs, so those state of being verbs can go either way. They can be helping verbs or they can be linking verbs. So your whole list of linking verbs is going to include those eight being verbs. Can you guys say those eight being verbs for me again? Am, is, are, was, were, being, been. Okay, so those are my state of being verbs. They can be linking verbs. They can be helping verbs. Okay, so when you're asked to write your linking verbs, you need to write these eight plus these ones. Okay, let's say these together. Ready, begin. Taste, feel, smell, sound, look, appear, become, seem, grow, remain, stay. Same again. Taste, feel, smell, sound, look, appear, become, seem, grow, remain, stay. When I was in school sometimes to memorize something, if I had like this many words, I would try to make a sentence that started like the frog said, uh, Sally looks atrocious because she grew, um, I'm trying to think, grew, I can't think of an R. Grew. Well, anyways, you get the idea. I would make up a sentence, and then I would memorize that sentence, and then when I was doing that, I could write all the first letters down, and that would help me to remember. Okay, this one starts with a T. Taste, frog, feel, you know, and so I could write all those down. So that's just a little um, study tip for you. When you're memorizing anything, think of associations, okay? Um, think of ways that will help you to remember those when you're writing them on a test. Okay, let's say them again, though. Here we go. Ready? Begin. Taste, feel, smell, sound, look, appear, become, seem, grow, remain, stay. Do it again. Taste, feel, smell, sound, look, appear, become, seem, grow, remain, stay. Now, these sometimes are the harder ones to remember because taste, taste can be an action verb too, can it? Yes or no? Can you taste something? Yes. I have a corn dog today healthy, healthy lunch, but I was in a hurry, ran out of the house, grabbed a corn dog out of the freezer, okay? Um, I can physically take a bite of that and taste it. That is an action verb, okay? I tasted my corn dog. Eyes on me. But sometimes taste can be a linking verb, okay? The corn dog tasted delicious. Now, does the corn dog have a little tiny mouth and it's going around tasting things that are delicious? No. So is the corn dog doing the action of tasting? Yes or no? No. Okay. So that's when this word taste would be a linking verb. When the subject's not actually doing that action. A corn dog's not actually tasting something. Now it tastes to me delicious. Okay. So that's a linking verb. It's linking the subject, the corn dog, to me. Okay. Or to delicious. The corn dog tastes delicious. It tastes what? It tastes delicious. Okay, same thing, um, feel. If I said, I feel Shane's backpack, is that an action or a linking verb? Action, I'm doing it. I feel it. What if I, said, if I said, I feel ill today? Action or linking? Linking, okay. 
I'm not feeling illness, right? I'm not touching it. I'm not feeling it. I feel ill. So in that sentence, it would be linking. So understand when some of these are action and when some of them are linking. You have to use your critical thinking, sixth grade. You have to analyze the sentence and think, is the subject actually doing the action? Or in this sentence, is it actually going to be a linking verb? Now, I have a quiz that I'm going to hand out today. And you are going to write your state of being verbs, your helping verbs, and your linking verbs. I don't want you to stress out because I haven't had you memorize them yet. I want to see, based on this quiz, how much you already know. Okay? So when we get to these sections, these are not going to be graded. Only this section up here is going to be graded. Okay? But I want you to do your very best on these because I want to see how many you've memorized from years past and how many you remember. Okay? Let's sing that little song that we sang a minute ago first. And then we'll say these one more time and then I'll hand this out. Okay? Here we go. Ready? Am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been, have, has, had, do, does, did, shall, will, should, would, may, might, must, can, could. These are the helping verbs. Very good. And then let's say our linking verbs again. Here we go. Ready? Taste, feel, smell, sound, look, appear, become, seem, grow, remain, stay. Some of these are easy to remember because they're like your senses, right? You taste something, you feel something, you smell something, sound, the way you look, the, and then appear means the same thing as look, become, seem, grow, remain, stay. Those might be the only ones that are a little bit harder to remember. Okay, so on the top of this section, you are going to find your subjects and your verbs. You are going to underline them two times. Make sure you are finding words that are action words or words that are on this list. Now, some of you on your last quiz, you found an action word in the sentence, but it was not the action verb. It was an action word being used as like an adjective or a noun. So you have to look at the sentence, okay? You have to see if it says um, the baseball team Baseball is not an action in that word. It's not even a noun. It's an adjective. It's talking about the team, okay? So make sure that you don't just pick up words that you look to see how they're used in the sentence, okay? I'm going to do the subjects and verb section and then do your very best on the being, helping, and linking verb section. Go ahead and close your books up, please. As soon as you get it, you may begin. If you finish this early, you may turn it over and pull your spelling book out and begin working on the section, test your understanding. Gianni, make sure you should have received this quiz three. So make sure you complete this. Once again, this part right here will be graded. The being verbs, helping verbs, and linking verbs. I just want to evaluate to see what you already know. Okay, so don't stress over it. This time it won't be graded. I will do a quiz soon where they will be graded. You will be expected to know all of them. Gianni, can you hear me now?
Yes, sir. Okay. The first eight that you say are your being verbs, but these are not your first eight. So your first eight would start with am. Yes, sir. <laughs> what? Okay, we just sang them several times. Remember how they started? <laughs> Your being verbs are the first eight that we sang. Gianni, can you hear me now? On my end, it's saying that you have volume. When you finish, go ahead and pull out your spelling books, open up to list three, and start working on the test, your understanding on page number seven. Yes, sir. Soon. This week. They're graded. I just trying to get our folders put together for you guys. And I was in a uh, teaching another class all week last week, so worry about that for now. Don't worry about this. Worry about that.
senses. And there's some of those. Still working on your quiz? Yes. What does it say? Nope. Test your understanding. The top. Kim, what are you stuck on? And if you can't remember, remember I'm not going to grade it. I just want to see what you know. Work on your spelling, test your understanding, okay? Okay, raise your hand if you're still working on your language quiz. Okay, I'm going to give you about two more minutes. I'm going to give you a different list this week, okay? Because you struggled a little bit last week, so I'm going to give you this one. So all you have to memorize are those ten words, okay? And then you have five vocabulary words. These are the same, okay? So you need, so you need to put this in your binder. That's what you're going to be studying from, okay?
And that's your new homework, okay? That's your new spelling list, okay? Don't lose that one. Okay, guys, let's take our spelling books out now, if you don't already have it out. Let's look at the test you're understanding for list number three. Yes, ma'am, sir. Oh, did I not give you that one? Here you go. Okay, do I have everyone's language quiz? Awesome. Yes, sir. Uh, quickly. Okay, guys, list three. I'm going to go through here and just quickly say, spell, say. We're not going to say, spell, say, but I'll just read through them. Okay, number one, let's read it together. What is it? Biology. Biology is the study of what? Living things. Living things. Okay, not just things, living things. Um, biography is the story of a person's life. Okay, if I write a biography about someone, I am writing a story of their life. If you see a book and it says a biography of George Washington, that is the story of their life. Number three, we're just looking at our list right now and then we'll go to our test of your understanding. Number three is the word amphibious. Say that with me. Amphibious, amphibious means they are able to live on land and in water. Okay. Um, of course, we know amphibians. We know we've learned that in science class. There are boats that um, they've created that are amphibious vehicles meaning they can go into the water and then they can come out of the water and wheels pop down and they can go on the land. Um, there was a, a big story about this on the news not too long ago. Our family, we travel out to Branson, Missouri every couple of years. And in Branson, Missouri, they have a huge lake and they had some of these amphibious vehicles where they were, um, they call them the ducks. You would ride the ducks. And so it was kind of like a bus looking type thing that had wheels. And then those wheels would go down, it would go down into the water and it would turn into a boat. Well, a couple years ago, there was a big storm that came up, and one of those um, ducks, those amphibious vehicles, um, was um, capsized, basically, and the, a lot of the people drowned. And so um, that was, you might have heard about that on the news. That was just happened not too long ago. But amphibious, if you hear about an amphibious vehicle, it means it can go on both land and water. Yes, sir. San Diego might. A lot of the touristy areas have things of that nature, okay? Um, next one, diction. Say that with me. Diction. Make sure you're highlighting these, by the way, the bold words. These are your vocabulary words for the week. Diction is the choice and use of words, okay? If you hear someone say uh, she needs to work on her diction, that means she needs to use, work on the choice and use of her words. Does she speak properly? Does she speak grammatically correct? Um, does she sound intelligent when she speaks? The use of words, the choice and use of words, that's your diction. Okay, let's skip down to number eight, another vocabulary word. What is this word, guys? Say it, say it nice and loud. Predict. I have to, like, beg you guys to talk. You guys usually want to talk, right? At lunchtime, I can't keep you quiet. So when I ask, you know, guys or class, say it nice and loud. Okay, number eight is what class? Predict. Predict means to say in advance. Okay. Um, you hear people say, oh, she can predict the future. Well, no one can predict the future, but we know that God did in a sense, right? He prophesied. He predicted what things um, would happen, and it's written in the Bible for us to read about. Okay, and then number nine, what is this word, class? Verdict. Verdict. Good. Say it nice and loud, class. Verdict, Verdict is the decision of a jury. jury. If you watch a court case, you'll hear the... Uh, Judge come up and they'll say the verdict is in, meaning they've come to a decision. They've come to a conclusion in that courtroom. Okay, and number 10, another vocabulary word. What is this word, guys? Contradict, Contradict means to say the opposite. opposite. Number 12, highlight this one. This is a vocabulary word. This word is? Submerge, Submerge means covered with water. water. Number 14 is? Suburb. Suburb means a community on the outskirts of a city. If you watch HGTV, you will hear this word a lot. We live in the suburbs, meaning outside of the city limits. Okay. Um, I would say we would probably be considered a suburb 
of Riverside or a suburb of Los Angeles. We're not really a big city here. We're just kind of on the outskirts of a big city. Number 21, highlight this word. This word is, say it loud. Subdue. Subdue. Good, Adam. Say it, class, everyone together. Subdue. Subdue means to conquer or to bring under control. Number 23, what is this word? Substitute. Substitute a person or a thing that takes the place of another. When a teacher is ill, you will have a substitute, someone who takes the place of another. Number 24 is the word? Submissive. Submissive. Say it together. Submissive, Submissive meaning yielding to authority or of another, okay? Um, God wants us to be submissive to our parents, submissive to our authorities, submissive to police officers, submissive to our teachers. Okay, anyone who's an authority figure over us, the Bible says that we should be submissive, listening to them. Number 27, what is this word? Diagnose. Diagnose to find the cause of a problem by close examination. If someone is ill, a doctor will try to come up with a diagnosis, try to figure out what is going on. Number 29, what is this word? Dialogue, dialogue meaning a conversation between two or more people. You will read dialogues in your literature book, conversation between two or more people. And then last vocabulary word on this list, number 35, is what class? Physician, a person skilled in the art of healing, a doctor. Those are your vocabulary words. We will go over our spelling words tomorrow, but make sure you are, you've highlighted them. Make sure you're studying them. Some of you have noticed on, on the test. You've got to know these, okay? So starting today, we need to start learning them a few at a time. If you just took maybe four or five a day and memorized them, then by the end of the week, you'd have them all down. Okay, let's look at test your understanding. Number one, a doctor must blank the illness before prescribing medicine. What vocabulary word that we just read would fit best in that blank? Liviana? Diagnose. Very good. A doctor must diagnose the illness. Go ahead and write it out to the side there. You don't have to write it on a sheet of paper, but make sure you have it written in next to it. Diagnose an illness before prescribing medicine. Number two, didn't Alexander the Great... Blank Greece and Persia without a single battle? Almost sounds like they're talking about he probably conquered Greece and Persia without even a single battle. So what vocabulary word would fit best in this blank here? Yes, sir. Verdict? Nope, not verdict. Yes, Emmeline? No, we're talking about conquering something. Which one of your vocabulary words means to conquer, to bring under control? Yes, ma'am. Subdue. Very good, Olive. Think, guys. Use your critical thinking, okay? We're talking about conquering something. Didn't Alexander the Great subdue Greece and Persia without a single battle? Make sure we're writing these in. Number three. For my book report, I chose a blank about the life of the great man of prayer, George Mueller. What kind of book would talk about the life of a man, Shane? Um, no. You're thinking fiction. Ariel? Biography. Biography. Very good. A biography is the story of a person's life. So for my book report, I chose a biography about the life of the great man of prayer, George Mueller. Are you getting all these, Landon? Number four, God inspired the prophet Isaiah to blank Christ's birth before, many years before it occurred. Olive? Predict. Very good. The key there was many years before it actually happened, which means to predict, to tell the future. Number five. Uh, Cameron, I want you filling these in too. Okay. You should be filling these in as well. Some of these are your vocabulary words. Number five, Colin did not live within the Chicago city limits. Instead, his home was in a blank of Chicago. We just talked about this. He didn't live in the city limits. He lived outside of it. What word would go here, Gavin? Yes, Cameron. Quickly.
He didn't live in the city. He lived outside of it. What word means outside of a city? Landon? Suburb. Suburb. His home was in a suburb of Chicago, meaning outside the city limits. Number six, toads, salamanders, and other blank creatures are at home on land or in water. Adam. Amphibious. Amphibious. At home, on land, or in water is amphibious. Number seven, botany, zoology, and ecology are branches of... Yes, ma'am, all of biology. biology. Probably could just guess on that one. They all end with, they're all studies of something, right? Number eight, when we returned from swimming, we saw that the rising tide had blinked our towels and lunch. Shane? Submerged. Completely covered in water. Submerged our towels and lunch. Number nine, when Parker pulled a muscle sliding into second base, the coach sent in a blank runner. Yes, ma'am, Ariel. Substitute. Number 10, after hearing the lawyer's arguments, the jury left the courtroom to consider their, yes, Adam, verdict. 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 That's number 10. Number 11. The blank between the actors on stage was a disaster. They kept forgetting their lines. Who knows this one? Josiah, can you figure it out? The blank between the actors on stage was a disaster. They kept forgetting their lines. The what? No. Yes. Dialogue. Conversation between two or more people. Number 12. Christopher Columbus dared to blank the false belief that the world was flat. Christopher Columbus dared to blank the false belief that the world was flat. Adam, what do you think it is? Contradict. Contradict. Very good. Remember, people were telling him it was flat, and Christopher Columbus said, I'm sailing on. And the good news is, is he didn't fall off the face of the earth. He didn't get swallowed up by sea monsters. They would have just read the Bible. The Bible said the earth is a sphere hung on nothing. They would have known it was round and not flat. Okay. Let's look at number 13. Rebellion is wicked. God commands us to be blank to those in authority. Tony. Submissive. Good. Submissive. We need to submit to our authority. Whatever they say, we need to do. Listen, be respectful. Number 14, the use of effect for effect is an example of poor. Adam again? No? Yes, ma'am? Diction, the use of words. The choice and use of words. So they're saying basically there, if someone uses effect when they should be using effect, that's a bad choice of words, a bad choice of diction. And in number 15, since Holmes' friend Watson was a blank, he could help solve the case of the sickly seamstress. Liviana. Since Holmes' friend Watson was a blank, he could help solve the case of the sickly, key there is sickly, Seamstress.
Elena, can you help her out? Physician, yes, the key there was sickly, meaning she needed a doctor. Physician. Okay, you are going to do your test, your spelling mastery tomorrow. If you did not finish rewriting those, or not rewriting, but on your page 23 and 24, if you did not finish that, you need to go back and finish that. The only thing you have for homework is that spelling worksheet that I handed out. Penmanship, we have none today, okay? So spelling worksheet, and then if you did not finish something on those language pages, you may go back and finish. Let's pause and pray for lunch. Let's pray. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for your blessings. Help us to have um, a good rest of our day. Bless this food to each body, Lord. Help us to remain healthy and strong and keep us safe. Lord, as we play, we love you so much, and we're thankful for all that you've done for us and all that you're going to do through us. In your name I pray. Amen. All right. Uh, Gianni, make sure you just do that. Complete those spelling worksheets for your homework grade and turn those in. And make sure you turn that spelling or that language quiz in to me on Friday. Happy